In this video, I want to dive deeper in the topic of state machines. And um, the best way for learning how to design them is to try to do it. So let's just start with this example. It's of a classic example in the field of designing a vending machine. So the vending machine is delivering packages of gum once you put in more than 10 cents. There's only a single coin slot where you can put in either dimes or nickels, but not both at the same time. So cannot cannot accept um, or cannot have nickel and dime uh, simultaneously. Yeah, it's just a constraint that we impose to make things uh, simple. And note the machine doesn't return any change. Good. So I think the first thing you want to do when you design a machine is maybe start with a block diagram as it is shown here, just to kind of clarify for yourself what the what the inputs and outputs are and what sort of the layout of the system is, right? So here at the center, you have the vending machine. There's two inputs is maybe one thing that's not totally obvious, right? There, there could be an input, either nickel is true or false, or dime is true or false. That may result in different um, behaviors. And then there's just one output here, which is gum, um, you know, either release a gum or don't. Additionally, the vending machine, like any state machines, you probably want to add a reset input, and of course it's connected to a clock. Okay, good. So now that you have this sort of basic idea, right, then maybe the, f the first non-trivial insight was to kind of, um, instead of having like one sort of diffuse input that is money, you've now decided that there's two inputs, nickel and dime. Um, once you have that, you want to convert this sort of, um, this, this particular diagram to a, a real um, state diagram, okay? And I really recommend that you try this for yourself um, before you look at how I, I do that. Okay, so here's um, my solution. And I should say that you know there's probably different ways of designing these state machines. In this case, I think that the solution I'll, I'll show you is sort of the most compact one. But it, it, especially if the, if the problem is you know, more complicated than this one, you might, different people might find different solutions that are correct, but typically of, of different you know, complexity. <coughs> So in this particular case, I think there are two states. And they have a relatively intuitive interpretation. Um, so the first one I'm going to call the zero cent state. And the second one I'm going to call the five cent state. Okay, And I'm going to encode them as zero and one. And I think if you try to do this, many of you probably added a third state, which is the 10 cent state. But it turns out that, as you'll see, that this is actually not necessary in this particular um, framework where we're using mealy machines. OK. So now, once you have the states, your, the next question is, like, you know, what are the transitions in response to the inputs? Right? And so first of all, this is probably the easiest. You can say, if you're in this state 0 and you're not adding any money, so no nickel and no dime, then you're staying in the same state. And of course, if you're in state 0, you're outputting nothing. Um, then you have to think about what happens in the opposite situations when you either have a nickel or a dime. So nickel, I think, is relatively straightforward. You just go to the state that's associated with 5 cents. And you're still outputting nothing. The dime input is more interesting because if you're adding a dime, instead of going to this third state that we don't need, which is you know 10 cents, you could just say, we're actually going to stay here, but we're outputting one, so meaning we're releasing a gum and immediately go back to the zero cent state. Okay? And this is possible here because in melee machines, inputs and outputs are associated. So it's basically saying, like, in response to this 
to the sign, to the, to the input D being true, I have to say what the output is. And in this case, the output is release a gum. And of course, once I've used up the money, I'll go back to where I came from. Um, if I'm in this other state, similar idea. If already 5 cents were deposited, well, if nothing else follows, no nickel, no dime, I'm staying where I am and output 0. And of course, if any money is put in, either a nickel or a dime, I will go back to the zero state and release a gum. Okay. Then also, I said I want to reset, so I'm going to put that here. And this is my state diagram. Okay. So it's important again that for every, in every state, you have to have a transition for every possible combination of the inputs, right? And that's what we um, essentially spelled out here. And moreover, the other thing that's important is that in melee machines, inputs are associated with outputs. And this often makes it possible to kind of make diagrams that are more, it's almost compact than what you might get with a more machine where the output is associated with the state rather than the transition. Good. So I think this is actually by far the hardest part of the, of the design problem. Once you have these state um, diagrams, the, the rest actually becomes quite simple. Because from the state diagram, you're now going to go to the state table. And you can, of course, just read off what the state table is from the diagram. So essentially, <coughs> the state table looks like this. So you have the, on the left-hand side, you have present state and the two inputs. On the right-hand side, you have next state and the output. So it's basically, is it open, yes or no? Um, present state, 0. You can look at the diagram, right? If there's no input, you're staying in the same state, and you're not releasing a gun. Um, if the present state is 0, but you're adding in a dime, while your next state is 0, but your output is 1. Present state 0, um, next state uh, 1. Sorry. Present state 0, you're adding in a nickel, but no dime. Now your next state is 1, and you're not releasing an output. And then the last combination, where you're adding a nickel and a dime at the same time, I sort of said in the description of the problem that this is not a legal combination. So basically, just that the, the coin slot just doesn't let you put in two coins at the same time. And so this corresponds to a don't care situation. Now, conversely, if I'm in state uh, 1, I can also look at all the different combinations um, of the inputs again and complete the truth table, which should look something like this, 1, 0, 0, x, and 0, 1, 1, x. OK. <coughs> now, once you have that, you should, be, you, should ex you should know what to do with this, because this looks exactly like a truth table. And so you essentially want to solve um, the relief, you want to solve for next state and open as a function of present state um, and the two inputs. So one way to do this um, would be to write down the k-maps, or you, if you could derive it directly from the truth table if you see what the functions are. But I'm going to do this um, more formally using the k-maps. So this is a good reminder um, of how three variable k maps look like. So this is the one for the output. Here, present state is true. Here, nickel is true. And here, dime is true. Now, if you remember, if you, if you copy the values from the state table into the k maps, you should get something like this, 0, 1, 0, x. 1, x, 0, 1. 
Okay, so then you can identify sort of the largest possible circles that cover all the ones. So there's one here and one here. And so from that, you would say that open is equal to dime, that's this bottom row here, or present state and nickel. Okay, you can do the same thing for next state. So again, draw the K map. Next state, nickel, present state, and dime. Copying over the values from um, from the for the state table gives you zero zero one x. 0x and 1, 0. So here, there's only, again, there's two circles. There's no way in which I can expand this circle that's required to cover this one here. So I'm just going to go with that. And then from there, I can derive that the next state has to be nickel and not present state, or present state and not dime and not nickel. Okay? So now I've essentially on this slide I've gone from the state um, diagram that we've seen on the last um, on the last slide to the state table, so just copying um, copying values from the previous slide to here, then I've solved the state table using KMAP, so now I essentially have my combinational logic circuit. Good, so in this slide I kind of drew the circuit that we just designed. Um, so I pre-drew this because it's going to take me a while, it takes me a while to draw it. Um, at the top here I've just copied the two expressions for open and for the output and the next state that we just derived on the previous slide. A um, few points to the notation. Here um, it's sort of convenient sometimes to draw the inputs have both the wire corresponding to the input being true and the wire com corresponding to the input um, not being true. I'm just going to draw this sort of going vertically along uh, the diagram for each of the possible inputs. Um, these two expressions up here are the logic gates corresponding to the open and next states. This is next state. And then of course down here I also want to include the, the flip-flop where I put the reset um, which, of course, is sort of a key component in this sequential circuit. So now, in this brief module, we've sort of gone from um, the high-level problem of like design a, a vending machine to the state diagram of that vending machine to the state table that allowed us to derive the, the combinational logic circuit to this final implementation of the design that combines both the, the combinational elements and the sequential logic. Okay, and of course we only have one flip-flop here because we only have two states 